Hey, it's Chris from Lazy Games. This one tonight is going to be a new to back or not to back Nova Etas Renaissance. I'm going to give you some reasons that I think you should back it. I'm going to give you some reasons you shouldn't back it. And ultimately, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and what might be right for you. Let's take a look. Now, first up, you might go Nova Eidos. Haven't I seen something familiar with this game before? This is by Ludus Magnus Studios. I believe they're out of Italy. And they have about nine other games under their belt, but this is about their ninth. And their first game that they successfully funded on Kickstarter was a first, basically, 1.0 edition of this game. And this is basically their upgraded version of the 2.0 equivalent. Now, they've taken the Renaissance theme and they're going to run with it, as you can see when I pull up the page here. Why am I talking about the previous game, though? Because as you've seen in a lot of Kickstarter trends, that a lot of these games, especially by newer companies, end up with a 2.0 version. And I'll be frank with you, I hate to admit it, but oftentimes the 2.0 versions iron out a lot of the wrinkles from the 1.0 versions. And so it doesn't always pay to be an early adopter in the board game scene, especially on Kickstarter. I've been burned a couple times by that. I hate getting burned by that. At the same time, part of it is the FOMO, that you do not want to miss the first time around. The argument being, oh, well, it might not come back around again. If it's that good, it will. And as you can see in a second, they're already surpassing what the first Kickstarter funded in. Now, the, now, the interesting side note is that this game has raised almost three quarters of a million dollars and has over 5,000 backers currently, which is a pretty big amount comparatively to what they've had in the past. And I'm gonna pull up their past stuff here just so that we can compare very quickly. Now, you can see all their other projects. DEI was their most uh, recent one prior to this, Dungeonology, Black Rose Wars, Scene Tempore, and first off, the Nova Eidos original. Now, the interesting thing here is this was actually canceled twice and took three times to fund the first time around. And the first time around, they only raised $107,000. So this is a big jump from a 1.0 to a 2.0 version of the game. Now, why is that? Because frankly speaking, this game is not a game that has achieved critical acclaim like something similar to Madara, where Madara raised a similar amount of funds the first time around, and then the second time around, I mean, they're in the seven figures, I think they raised two or three million dollars, so that big a difference, but Madara was critically acclaimed when it actually got to backers, despite all of its minor faults and nuances. As you can see, when we go to the Board Game Geek page, 7.3, now 7.3, don't get me wrong, 7.3 is not uh, bad by any means. 7.3, by all accounts, is a relatively successful game. The concerning thing is there's only 134 ratings. How many people back this? Over 1,000, over 1,100. There's 134 ratings. There's only 400 marked as owned on here. That's, again, by itself, it's not much to make of it. But some of the comments and some of the descriptions in here are themes that I think need to be brought up from this studio. Now, I have not backed many of their games. In fact, I've only backed one of their games, Black Rose Wars, and we'll talk about that in a second and how this relates. But this seems to be a common theme that I see. The turn play is, you know, uh, you know it's, it's a great innovative system. They're distinct from each other, but the icon there's a lot of iconography and the rule book is awful and it seems very unpolished. And if looking through the ratings and the comment sections for several of their other games, Scene Tempore, Black Rose Wars, you seem to see the same reoccurring trends and themes when it comes to that already. Now, why am I gonna be talking about a little bit of the other games? Is because some of these other games have not been without their issues as well, especially Scene Tempore and Black Rose Wars. Um, I will speak from my own personal experience with Black Rose Wars um, as the main point, and then I'll move on to the game itself so I don't get too sidetracked. 
Black Rose Wars, by all accounts, looked great. It sounded great. Let me be clear. The miniatures on all of these campaigns, the artwork is fantastic. It is beautiful. Good artwork will get me to look at a game. Good artwork will not get me to back a game, though. Conversely, bad artwork will not turn me away, but it doesn't set the best first impression. Now, why was Black Rose Wars such an issue? It's because they are still in the middle of fulfilling the second wave pledge in terms of expansions. Now, why was this a big deal? Is because they sort of pulled a, we didn't really plan this out very well, and we need more money from you. And you can see right here, I'm, I'm, I'm a backer. I got the Magister Early Bird Pledge, and I still don't even have the, the second half of it. And what they did was they sent out a request basically telling people initially before the backlash happened, we want at least $15 from everybody. No matter where you are in the world, no matter if your shipping is gonna be 40 bucks extra or $2 extra, we want 15 bucks from everybody. Otherwise, we're not gonna deliver your stuff. Yeah, you can see why that didn't get met. <laughs> Yeah, you can see why that was met with a little bit of a, are you kidding me? And so then they backtracked and said, well, we'll send you your stuff, but it'd be really nice if you could send us that $15 so that we're not totally losing a whole bunch of money. The issue with this is that the same people that were getting one-wave shipping versus two-wave shipping, the, the one-wave shipping people got their original core alongside everyone else. And then they put out a whole bunch of retail, it sounds like, from what I've read and what I've sort of dug into. And so you have these people getting it at retail, you have people getting the one wave shipping as two waves, and then they're asking people to fund um, these changes. And they've said, okay, we're gonna give you a whole bunch of extras that you never asked for, that you didn't want, that makes the box even bigger, that you're gonna be getting to make up for that. Well, I just want my stuff and I wanna have to be $15 extra. I don't want a whole bunch of extra stuff that was never promised that's causing you to delay things even further or that you're using as an excuse why things are delayed even further. I just want my stuff. And that has not sat well with a lot of people and a lot of people have been unhappy with them from that side of things. Again, the rule book, um, the amount of um, setup that has gone into these games just has been um, more than what was imagined. I think that's the biggest complaint that I've seen about Black Rose Wars is that you know, it seems like a game you should be able to play in an hour or two and it takes three or four. It's beautiful and that can't be, but I think that's more of a side note. Now, looking at this campaign, going back to just this campaign, again, the theme is there, it's dripping. Um, you know, you've got this Italian Renaissance theme, I think that's highly underdone. They talk about this uh, horologium mechanic where you can you know, take how it's gonna change uh, how things are going to go, enemy AI, a different end game, you know, you're going to have more of your uh, campaign-ish game. So on all accounts, you've got all these check marks being hit of things that are going to attract people. I think that's where you're seeing the attraction of almost three quarters of a million dollars. And this is probably going to be pretty close to a million dollars by the time this ends with the usual 48-hour, uh, you know, remind me people jumping in. That's sort of where it begins, and this is where I sort of start to have a little bit of an issue, is you've got this Hyperion expansion that they're marketing as sort of a crossover with Black Rose Wars. And so you're raising funds for a different game, essentially, is, is what it looks like. Now, when they talk about it for this game alone, it's an expansion, but let's be serious. This is probably more marketed to get the Black Rose Wars people, and the overhead cost for this expansion is $59. I can't see this being 92 at retail, even with as gorgeous as the models are. So I worry about how that is funding the previously mentioned Black Rose Wars. Is it? I don't know. I, this, that's, I'm not saying it is, but that's where my head goes initially. Um, then it just goes up from there. You have, you know, your basic pledge is gonna cost you $120. Core game, $120, that's a lot of money. $150 for the Titan pledge, which gets you that expansion up above plus the core game. So I don't think anyone has disputed the fact that these are good miniatures. Uh, you'll see them, I mean, they talk, they show them. Uh, I haven't heard any complaints. The Hyperion one looks, I mean, especially great. But the one trend I saw on this page when I looked at it earlier was you can see all the components and they break down the components and you can see the green numbers with the stretch goals. So again, not a concern of mine. 
Um, it looks beautiful. I mean, this model looks absolutely tremendous. I'm not a miniature painter. That would want me, that would make me almost want to paint things. But you'll notice the one thing I haven't said anything about. I haven't seen a rule book. They talk about, well, here's the gameplay right here. Here's the gameplay description. Uh, it's built with replayability. Uh, it can take you branching paths. Um, okay, how does it actually play? How do you actually play it? Um, each hero is different. There's books different. The AI is different. So, I mean, all of these are little separate things, but I'm not seeing a overview of things. And they finally get to the rule book here. And not having looked at the rule book, I can't comment on it. If you're anything like me, one of the biggest barriers to getting a game to the table is the rule book especially as the dedicated person in the group that often does the rules. That's a big concern to me. If I can't get through a rule book enough to even understand it myself, then to have to try and explain it to other people. I should not have to watch two or three gameplay videos or how to play videos to be able to learn how to play your game. If the heavy euros don't need it, if they can be learned off of rule books, a game like this should be able to learn, be learned from a rule book as well. And they have not shown a good capacity to be able to do that in the past. And that right there makes me very hesitant because the criticisms are consistent across all of those games. And I can't think that this isn't going to be an issue as well going forward with this one. Now you've got your usual suspects, you've got your dice tower, you've got a couple other random uh, YouTubers with videos. Now, a lot of these videos, I, I click the links. Uh, Meeple University, that's a playthrough with, with um, you know, a little bit of explanation of the rules. A lot of these other ones are just previews They're, or unboxings. I mean, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. What I want is I want a, a completish rule book with gameplay and how to play and how does it scale and things like that. And I don't see any of that in, with significant depth. Which, with a game like this, where you're asking me basically as an entry point over for $120 up to $150, that is a massive flag to me. Is it enough to stop me from backing? No, not necessarily. But again, the other thing that I mentioned with Black Rose Wars is they had all this stuff that they ended up adding in that, I mean, I think Black Rose Wars is something like a year and a half to two years overdue um, at least for the second wave, um, or maybe a year to a year and a half, something like that. And I can't help but think they, they put it right up on the top. If you look, uh, I'll scroll up to that in a minute. It says 52 stretch goals reached. Well, that's great, but you got to be able to have this stuff in hand. And that means either one of two things. One, you have stretch goals that aren't really stretch goals, which is irritating me more and more nowadays as I see more and more people doing it. Or it means that you are stretching beyond your means, causing even financial delays or just logistical delays because you have to spend so much time testing it or you, you don't test it and then that's even worse because then you put out a half-assed product and that's concerning to me and I don't, i'm not saying that, that that's what they're doing but that's what's led to the delay of black rose wars and that's what's left a lot of people a little bit sour on, on that side of things i mean you can just see just i mean just scrolling down all of this stuff i mean we're, no one is arguing that you're not going to be getting enough stuff but do you want all that stuff? Do you need all that stuff if it's not going to be up to the par of what you need it to be? Now, again, they talk about an upgrade kit if you're the, you know, in one of the first games, a Minotaur expansion, under siege expansion. So you're talking upwards of two hundred dollars for a game that is a big unknown, to be very frank. At least with Darkest Dungeon, which I previously talked about, and some of these others, you know that the quality is going to be there. You know that the testing is going to be there. Whether or not it's for you is a whole other thing. This is a little bit of a mixed bag. And I think in the past, this is where I have been burned the most. And this is probably one of the reasons I, I am not backing this is because I am not willing to take the risk on potential anymore. Pure potential. And this is what this game is to me. It's pure potential. I don't know if it's going to be good. The ceiling is high. But the, the basement is a lot lower than the other games that I just mentioned. And that's what scares me. And that's how you end up getting a game or getting a game a year or two years late, not liking it, and then selling it and losing money. I'm not in this for the value, 
but if I'm going to take a risk, I want to make sure that I'm going to be at least able to make my money back. And I'm not sure you can do that with, with a game like this because of the very niche crowd that it is and because of the price point in general with their track record. So it would be a hard pill to swallow in that. It would be a hard pill to swallow to have to do that in this case. Down here at the bottom, they go and they talk, they show all their other games and where things are at. I mean, that's fine. Um, it seems to be justification that we're going to do fine with this one is if we list out all of our previous ones at the bottom now. That doesn't really do much for me either way. I don't really see the point in it. As I mentioned, if you're going to look at this, you need to be doing your due diligence. A graph doesn't really tell you anything in terms of, I mean, you can see uh, right on top here, there's no timetable. There's no how, when was this produced and shipped and received comparison to when we told people. So um, for me, I'm not backing it. If you are willing to take the risk, if you have cash to burn, if you like getting a lot of stuff for your money, this is a good Kickstarter for you. If you are at all adverse to risk, I would not back this. I am not going to back this. I have no problems telling you this. I have no uh, qualms. It's not, it's not a question mark. It's just too risky for what I have experienced from their company in the past. And it doesn't intrigue me enough. It doesn't look different enough uh, in combination with that to justify it. And so I would not be willing to personally take the risk. And I think that's the difference between something like this and Darkest Dungeon, which is on Kickstarter right now, that has what, four, five, four to five times this funding is that's the main difference right there, is the ceiling and the basement and the risk involved. It's just more than unknown. And especially with the track record that they have of having a few of those flags with the rule book and some of the other issues that you can go and look on board game geek for in terms of, uh, you know, fidd fiddliness as they people mention it, and just, you know, how they really, um, you know, feel about the actual gameplay. I just can't support that with my hard-earned money at this point. And if you are considering it, then I'm guessing that they will allow a $1 um, you know, late back or something along those lines. This is one uh, that I would probably do that with if you're on the fence. I would back for a dollar and see what happens with the updates. Because if they really uh, believe in it, you'll be able to get in as a late backer. You'll be able to get in for you know, whatever the price is, even though it might cost you 10 or 20 bucks more. Because then you don't have the money committed right now. Because if you pledge right now, you're gonna be trying to get a refund or you're gonna be trying to get out of it. You know, And you can't take that money back very easily. You can always add more. So if you're at all on the fence, I would say back it for a dollar. This is not one that is sort of mishmash one side or the other. Um, in terms of, well, kind of, sort of, I think you're either all aboard this and you're already backing it, or I think this is a game where it's going to be a complete hit or a complete miss when it comes to comparisons of games that are in a similar field as it. If you're going for just the miniatures, it's probably not a horrible price. If you're doing it for the gameplay, buyer beware. That being said, I think this project will really be the most telling of their company because of those trends I've mentioned already at the beginning of the video. Is this going to be one where they have learned from their mistakes? Or is this going to be another in the succession of previous mistakes that they really haven't adapted to in terms of logistics, in terms of gameplay, in terms of rule book, all of those things? There's only so much goodwill and money that people have. And this is going to show, I think, what they've learned and how they've changed or not. And that's another reason why I would probably back this for a dollar if you're interested. So that's my take on it. Again, I'm not backing it. Should you back it? Well, you heard what I said. Is that okay with you? Is that a risk you're willing to take or not? Personally, I'm not. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Throw me a comment. Throw me a like. Subscribe. Anything. Uh, Comment about something else completely altogether. Anyway, have a good night. Stay classy.